clouds so having to hear many familiar faces as part of the mentioned earlier and it's literally the 12th year in a row that we're doing this uh, GRC summit. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I just wanted to kick it off. I know we've come up with some great sessions, uh, introduction from Gaurav and following the panel which I learned a lot in that conversation earlier. But uh, what I want to talk today alongside with Prasad here is really kind of focus on how technology and innovation is shaping DRC. Where are we today and where it's going into the future? And uh, we think of the innovation, especially in light of what's happening with the advent of AI and machine learning that's kind of hitting the technology landscape in every which way. So if you move to the next slide here. So as you've heard, our core focus is on the connectedness of GRC. GRC has to be connecting the dots across our organization. And we think of it in terms of three Cs, the cognitive elements, the continuous elements and the cloud and cognitive is really kind of at the center stage of what AI and machine learning, especially the generative AI that has come together, how it affects GRCs. So we'll talk about it in broad strokes, but also in terms of very specifics of what we are doing at Metric Stream. And this is something that I personally spend a lot of time in and Prasad does and many of the other team members in the product organization kind of obsess about kind of our cognitive capabilities. Uh, the continuous elements are again a critical piece of the GRC puzzle because gone are the days where you could do a quarterly audit or a, a routine uh, assessment and so forth. What you have to move towards is much more towards hyper automation, uh, automatic scans, if you will, of threats and vulnerabilities, but also continuous controls, monitoring, and so forth. And then the cloud becomes again critically important for us as a third element, the third C in that puzzle here, to be able to think about the world of connected GRC, to really kind of make GRC simple. I mean, as all of you guys know, GRC is complicated by its own very nature. How do we make it simple so that you can actually have an on-demand platform that is configurable, that is low code, no code, that kind of adapts and adopts to your requirement, is elastic, and is available 24-7. So that's the overall vision that we have. This is how you accelerate your performance. That is how you drive uh, your GRC. And as I said, risk and compliance are kind of the flip side of performance. They are the same kind of uh, yin and yang of how you accelerate your performance. So we have to be thinking about an infrastructure which is one of connected GRC. So with that, you know, let me turn over to uh, Prasad to tell us a little bit more specifics about what we are doing in our very own world of metric stream and all of the feedbacks that we've gotten from collectively our customer community around the world. So Prasad, over to you. Thank you, Gunjan. Thanks for the kind words, uh, Simran, Gunjan and Gaurav. Uh, so keeping it in tune with the connected GRC and the 3C strategy that Gunjan and Gaurav has highlighted earlier, uh, the three C's meaning the cognitive, the continuous, and the cloud. And I'll touch on cognitive first. Um, to set the stage a little bit, how many of you, if you will, please raise your hand, using AI in your workplace? Not necessarily GRC, but in your workplace. Okay? And how many of you are using it for GRC? Not that many, right? And I, we know the reasons why. AI is, is technology that is evolving very rapidly, if you go, right? And it's not just about technology, it's about how to use that technology for your business use cases, of, in, in our case, for GRC. Keeping that in mind, uh, obviously we've been working on uh, ML technologies for the uh, last five years, implemented, various open source models and tailored it for GRC and offered it through uh, uh, our products to our customers. And however, with the advent of uh, LLMs and, and Gen AI, keeping in tune with that, we have actually launched our Aspire product, which is our AI-enabled risk and control optimization engine, uh, middle of last year. And it has been very well received 
Initially, the adoption has been slow. I kid you not. To be, uh, uh, I want to be honest and straightforward on the front. But it, it actually, with the advent of things that are happening in the industry right now, it, it gained momentum. Right now, six institutions, banks and non-banks, manufacturing and energy, they're actually experimenting and in pilots. And, and three of them are in, actually in production now. And, and I'll share some of those uh, aspects of uh, what Aspire can do for you and your GRC implementations in effect. And that's the cognitive aspect of uh, you know, uh, GRC fuel through Aspire that we have launched for our customers, taking your feedback. And then Aspire sits on top of our products. Our products are mainly uh, classified as business GRC, cyber GRC, and ESGRC. Within business GRC is all of the risk and control functions, if you will, of uh, an operation risk and rec compliance and so on, and cyber, obviously, IT risk and compliance, and ESG, keeping in tune with the environment, social, and governance aspects. And all of these are built on top of the uh, metric stream integrated platform, bringing in the connectedness across all of these products and all of those domains. What does that offer? It offers common taxonomies. It offers you know, common risk and process, risk and compliance libraries and approaches, and also it helps you in standardizing the risk coding methodologies across those domains. So through that, you can actually implement a metric stream product-based solution, or platform-based product solution, for all of your lines of defense. That's the true power of metric stream, and metric streams integrated risk management. And obviously, we took a lot of your feedback over the years, uh, especially the last three years with respect to configurability, ease of use, and keeping that in mind and in tune with the technologies we have launched. We have totally modernized our platform and our products as a result of that with the launch of low-code, no-code features and you know, what we refer to as domain-specific language for, for GRC, where you don't have to write you know, a lot of lines of code even a business savvy or tech savvy business user could write simple, you know, a couple of lines of code that, you know, replace like 20, 30 lines of uh, uh, code that was being written before. And it also offers configurability, as I said, through low code and through this low code. And we have introduced 300 or so APIs. And we launched all of this uh, early last year. And, uh, and, and in addition to that, we have also taken your feedback with respect to ease of use. And we've been on this journey actually for two years. We have done extensive research with our customers and, and our, you know, even our competitors and the marketplace, how the UI is evolving. We got help from outside agencies as well as help from our existing customers and our field sales and, and our own product teams and implemented and launched our new UI UX refresh. And we launched it as a pilot with one of our financial services institution towards the end of last year. And now we have released it for our sales engineering folks to start demoing the new UI UX. And, and the general availability, the GA, is, is end of this month on July 5th, to be precise. And I'm going to give you a little bit preview into what is coming through this new UI UX, if you will. So this is the new dashboard of operation risk management. Um, have you seen this before? Some of you may have seen it if you are you know, in the evaluation process. And, and this is rich and powerful. These widgets are dynamic and drag and drop. You can configure them. And this is the dark mode. You can also, with a click of a button, you can change it to the light mode, if you will. And moving on, this is our data explorer has showcasing various assets that you're managing, risk and you know, management aspects. And this is your typical inbox and where you are with various activities. The next slide coming up, this is where you're actually performing your risk assessment. And all of these, bringing it together, if you will, visualizing is what this is about. The new UI UX of metric stream.
and big round of applause for our partners and everybody who is combining this the new UI UX of Metrostream. Thank you. And moving on. Yeah, so uh, as Prasad mentioned, like if you look at our user experience, I mean, we've done a step function enhancement over the last year. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because one of our collective tasks is to make GRC simple. As I said, GRC is not inherently simple, but technology has to make it simple so that even in the front lines, across the extended enterprise, across the supply chains, you can actually make GRC more understandable, more accessible, more valuable. And to doing that, one of the core elements of where AI comes into play here is really when you start to think about the cognitive abilities of GRC that we must actually bring to it. So if you get to the next slide here. I, I think about the, the AI or the cognitive elements in five core pieces of the puzzle that as GRC professionals, we've got to think about these five pieces. The first is automated decision making. So how do you bring in the data across your extended enterprise, including data sitting in other GRC systems? It's not just about metric stream, it's about looking at where else is the GRC data sitting, how do I bring it here to be able to then drive the automated decision making. That decision making happens because AI brings in the learnings to look at patterns, disconnect seemingly disparate events, and find the pattern that basically brings out the risk preemptively and proactively. The second piece of the AI strategy must be about what we call GRC Copilot. And if you saw the UX, the user experience that Prasad showed earlier, that is absolutely, absolutely modern and awesome. But even better would be when we bring in the GRC Copilot, where you could get into a conversational interaction. You don't even go to the application that sits right in your co-pilot and where you can ask the co-pilot questions in normal English. Hey, I want this report. I want to get to this function. I was thinking about this specific risk event that happened five years back. Can you recall that for me? So just like a friend, it's sitting there as a co-pilot, is sitting there aiding the frontline users in a very interactive human uh, in man-machine interaction that would happen. That's the future. In fact, I may also say that it may not just be the future, it may even be here today. And our team has actually said, to surprise you all, we do have a beta release launch pro uh, product for the GRC Copilot that's actually available that you guys can see today. And I'll let Prasad talk to you about how excited the team is to actually show that. It pushes the envelope of our user experience to the next level. As I said, the best user experience is when the user experience is human interactions because that's what we know how to do through the co-pilot. The third element of the GAI strategy or the cognitive strategy has to be around what I call governance of AI itself. And we've been talking about this whole idea that there are two aspects of AI. One is how do you bring AI to GRC? But then the second part of it is how do you bring GRC to AI? So the second aspect becomes critically important because AI has to be safe, it has to be ethical, it has to be secure, it has to understand and respect the boundaries of data privacy, and it has to learn in a manner that is, you know, ethical, if you will. Uh, so all of those important considerations are at the forefront of technologies around the world and people around the world. So how do you govern AI is one of the facets of what we're building into a core data model or at metric stream, and I think I urge you all to think about that. That's the third leg. The fourth aspect is a lot more operational because we are on a constant GRC journey. No matter where you are in your phase, whether you are today on one version of metric stream or you may be going into another version, you are on a journey and GRC is a continuous process. So how do you move from one version to another? How does that happen in an automated manner where AI is learning about your preferences, AI is learning about your exact configurations and things and reports that you like in a certain geography or a certain functional group and product and keeping track of that for you so that when you move to the next version, those get automatically transported over to that. So that's the way the world is going. So yes, the human touch of actually having consultants and service providers and others helping 
but you would also have a world where AI itself is keeping track of those your, your configurations and your and, and your views to be able to preserve that across your various upgrades and your upgrade journeys. And last but not least, I look at AI ops as a reality. So most of work that is being done today is done by people, but I see a world where a whole set of activities will be run by AI, and I call it AI ops. And there are already technologies which extend workflow with this concept of human in the loop kind of AI ops workflows, where AI does the stuff, it logs into a system, it checks certain things and brings it back to it for a human approval. So the, so the traditional workflow definitions will move towards much more of the world of AI ops. And we've got to understand the power of AI ops into the world of GRSD and we have begun to that journey. So if you look at these five key components of cognitive abilities, we want to make sure that in each of your GRC programs, you're thinking about all these five facets and that's going to be important. But I'll have Prasad talk us to a little bit about the specifics of what we're doing in mental stream across these five aspects of AI. Prasad, over to you. Thank you. So this is as far that we <coughs> talked about. If you look on the right side are all the features of uh, this Aspire and what it is solving for are on the left. I'll just focus on some of the key features, if you will, of this Aspire uh, or AI offering. So it's an, obviously an AI-enabled decision-making uh, engine for control rationalization. What does that mean? It's the number of controls that you have in your organization. This engine when deployed and trained and deployed, will actually identify how many of those controls are duplicative controls or redundant controls. How many of those controls are orphan controls that they don't have any relationships attached to them, right? And 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 what are all the broad themes of these controls and what they're achieving? And those are some of the aspects of what Aspire through this rationalization engine is offering to our customers. And and it, it also offers, you know, AI-infused workflows. So the workflows, the traditional workflows, they're, they're of the past, right? You got to, every step of the way in your workflow as you're performing, there is an AI agent and, you know, learning from your steps and guiding you through that process. We refer to that as AI-infused workflows and AI-based smart policy search, as well as uh, triaging those observations, right? And triaging those issues. And, and based on the past data, it can actually guide you and recommend an action plan that worked pretty well in the past for a similar issue. So obviously, you have to train with your own data. And however, these are available right out of the box uh, through metric stream products. And the use cases are pretty you know, generic and standard, if you will, across the industry, GRC. However, the data is your data, and, and the Aspire engine sits on top of your data and you, as you train the data. So to eliminate any hallucinations and, 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 and making sure there's no commingling of data. That is truly, that's really the, the true power of our Aspire engine that we have offered. And I, I urge you to experiment with it, to play with it, and we'll be happy to do a, you know, a pilot. And I'm going to call out some names towards the end of the session, uh, with, you know, who can provide you that you know, insights into it. And that's about Aspire, if you will. And this is one uh, use case, if you will, uh, that we have implemented in a financial uh, services company. Uh, it's in production, and what they're able to achieve is listed on the right. Uh, that's achieving 36% reduction in controls and reducing the number of controls from 4,200 to something in the order of 3,250 and reducing the test uh, you know, as well and, and re resulting in savings of close to $4 million in the annual program cost. All this is achieved through identifying those redundant controls and eliminating them building the controls with the right relationships and the right action plans. And, and broadly, what these control failures, right? What are they falling into? What themes? So that you can tackle them by team, 
right? As opposed to individual here and there, right? And and how many are over tested, if you will? Believe it or not, that also happens because of the redundancy. So through all of this, this particular institution is able projected to save, you know, this amount of that investment and and utilize that elsewhere. That's about our cognitive journey. Uh, you know, pick up continues. And, and again, you know, just building up all our C's, right? So if you look at the cognitive capabilities and now go into the world of God continuous, again, this becomes important because, as I said, the gone are the days of routine, scheduled audits, and so forth. You want to get into a much more of a real time scan, more. If you get to the next slide here. So, the, so, so think about what continuous does is puts everybody on the same page because you're connected in real time. Right, whether it's cyber risk programs or operational risk or third party or compliance or even sustainability, but bringing upon the data in as real time scans and kind of doing this much more on a, on a continuous basis and understanding where the risks are, that's where you can start to devote more of your resources, more of your kind of intellectual horsepower to figure out exactly what is going wrong. So you can preemptively and prospectively fix things before even something wrong happens. That's where the, that's the mission here. That's what we are trying to build with a continuous strategy. So each one of us have to think about saying, okay, we don't want to be in this world of quarterly audits or scheduled things and so forth. Yes, that is a necessary part of your strategy, but you also want to build upon much more of a continuous paradigm here. So if you get to the next slide. So the basic elements of that is how do you build a continuous controls monitoring program? You know, so to, to monitor all your controls, or how you think about continuous audits and assessments, or even how you leverage content from third party systems, from your suppliers, from your partners, from your channels, in real time basis, so that you can preemptively understand what, what, what's happening there. But those are some of the elements of how you move from just a traditional workflow based engine to a hyper automation continuous program here. Uh, so if we get to the next slide, I'll have Prasad talk about some specific data examples of systems and so forth that we've actually enabled through our continuous capabilities. So these are our offerings. As I said earlier, business GRC, that's the product line offering those set of products, mainly operation risk, enterprise risk management, third party risk, direct compliance, and business continuity and op resilience and audit. And cyber GRC is all about you know, ensuring digital uh, risk and compliance of your digital infrastructure and, and achieving that cloud compliance. And ESG uh, is about uh, disclosure reporting and keeping in uh, tune with some of the latest standards in the industry. And, and across all of these is many themes that are common, if you will, as you heard earlier in the morning, risk assessments. How do you do risk assessments in one area versus other? All of these are, we make them consistent and standard, and with that configurability, are uh, through our integrated risk platform that we offer. And and these are some of the, uh, if you will, when you look at the bottom, these are the various connectors that are readily available out of the box to connect with. For example, in case of operation risk, you can actually connect out of the box. There's a connector provided. You can connect with ORX and to source your, you know external loss events to model your you know internal loss events with external loss events for example uh, or your risk frameworks as well and and there are various ERM systems that out of the box we provide connectors that you can integrate and that's the power that we are offering and in case of cyber uh, it's about you know threats and vulnerabilities and the scanners all of the data that is coming in from various sources we have integrated with for example, AWS Audit Manager and their security hub, BitSight, Polis, Tenable, and, and UCF, some of the frameworks. And these are all readily available right out of the box for you to deploy and, and, and take advantage of. And likewise for ESG, the EcoVadis, Greeley, and Sustainable Analytics, these are all still evolving. And we'll see what happens after November, uh, what's going to happen to ESG. Continuing, and here is a uh, a specific uh, 
uh, I'm going to double click on what we achieved with metric stream cyber GRC offering together with AWS audit manager. Is uh, Neha in the audience by any chance? Oh, hi Neha. So this is a combination of literally 18 months of co-innovation with AWS teams um, and that resulted in a, in a fantastic offering whereby we achieve cloud compliance with your clubs. This is about you know, managing the uh, cloud compliance and evident, uh, all those controls, uh, setting up those standard controls or common control frameworks and mapping that to your business controls and collecting evidences and managing the whole aspect of cloud compliance with few clicks once you know set up the whole uh, the environment is set up and and we launched this at AWS reInvent uh, in November last year and and we have been in the go to market uh, strategy and and in that motion with AWS and pretty soon by end of July we are thinking roughly speaking up into end of July you'll be able to access this offering through AWS dashboards, their audit manager dashboards, where you, you can click on a button and that will deploy both audit manager and cyber GRC solution uh, into your uh, cloud environment, which you can leverage to uh, ensure or to ensure and achieve cloud compliance, if you will. There are a lot of de details behind it. Uh, this is a, uh, a great achievement for us and no other GRC to date have done this integration with AWS and co-innovation. We are happy to, uh, I'm extremely proud of what we achieved together with all of our teams uh, to bring out this innovation into the marketplace. The power is really almost eliminating the human in the loop, if you will, but we still need human in the loop to you know, guide things through and reducing all those manual effort in achieving cloud power. And we'll be happy to give you a demo of this. And we have team members here available today and, and afterwards, of course. And that is an example of what we are able to achieve through this continuous cloud compliance. And it happens in a continuous fashion. Just to mention, I think I missed that aspect. It's not a one-time thing that you are doing like once a month activity or once a week activity. It's about achieving that continuous uh, cloud compliance and autonomously. That's the power of this offering. Just to drill down into that aspects of continuous. Back to cloud. Yeah, and, and I think the last C in our connected GRC strategy is the cloud itself. As I said, it's about making you know things really simple and on demand available on the cloud. You saw an illustration of that, of the work that we've done with AWS, but really kind of bringing the interesting cloud, which is built on a foundation of a multi-tenant well, services on top of a multi-instance architecture that gives you the privacy, the control of your data, the control of your version, and actually bringing all of these pieces together when you have the local no code platform, you will have the on-demand and secure uh, kind of model, but to be able to scale things with elasticity and, and, and in a rapid speed, that becomes the foundation of, of our overall cloud uh, strategy. We talked about the upgrades, which is a critical foundation to be able to move from one version to another version with ease. That ought to be part of a good, solid cloud strategy. And ultimately, leveraging AI tools and services to be able to run your cloud operations, even whether it's done by your partner like Metrostream or done by your system integrators or others, but fundamentally you need all of these pieces to be able to pull it together. So I'll turn it over to Prasad to be able to kind of highlight some of the core components of our cloud strategy we are going to finish it off. So as we discussed, uh, as can we, that 100 plus personalization utilities that are available that we offer through our new UI UX refresh, modernized, along with the 300 APIs that are readily available out of the box, and AI built into not just products, actually AI is built into the platform, we made it our local no-code no intelligent platform. Because the moment you bring out these features into the platform, the products that sit on top of the platform automatically utilize those features and those capabilities, if you will. So that's the offering of uh, AI from ground up at the platform level and propagating it to our products. 
and it, it also sits on our App Studio. It's the most powerful App Studio that we use internally, our product developers use internally to create products and, and, and various aspects of an application and the behaviors through Info Centers and App Studio. It actually generates code. And, and obviously, the domain-specific language that I spoke about is tailored for GRC. And, and that helps you with not only with configuration, but also building upgrade safe extensions. I mean, you, I mean, there is such an amount of variability or, or specificity that you are looking for. We provide that through this DSL and with the guardrails that we offer so that it's upgrade safe. So the next time we introduce a new release, a new product or feature, your old code still works because that is written in such a way, utilizing our guardrails and our APIs and, and that domain specific language features, if you will, that automatically ensures upgrade safety and upgrades become easier and helps with upgrade automation, which is one of the pain points. And this is what Pujan touched on earlier. And all of this offering together with advanced security features that are readily available because we are leveraging really AWS and the security controls that we also implement at, at the developer level while we are coding the product uh, or the features, if you will. And I know it's a huge slide here. It's, uh, it's this is really about uh, what we just touched on earlier: our multi-instance cloud architecture. That the, the one key feature of this architecture is. The last bullet on the slide, no data co-mingling. Your data is, you own your data, and your data sits in your own instance. Nobody touches the data. And this is what our you know, large, medium to large enterprises, our customers are looking for with respect to their GRC solutions. And we are able to offer this through our multi-instance architecture. However, taking advantage of the multi-tenant services, like the services of, for example, Aspire, right? And, and uh, cybersecurity, cyber risk quantification that we launched two years ago. All of those are some of the multi-tenant services that sit on top of, they're like a stateless, serverless engines that sit on top of these and, and work in, 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 in any version of the software, if you will. So we're truly able to bring the power of multi-instance architecture and through these multi-tenant services and offer a GRC that is you know, pretty advanced in the industry. And this is very unique to metric stream and, and obviously it, 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 you know, through which you know, with um, AWS and us together, we're able to achieve 99.9% .9 of guaranteed high availability. This is actually a stack. And that should I would be careful whenever I say that. I don't know jinx it. And it's, we have not encountered any issues with respect to high availability or, or the risk or cyber aspects of it, if you will. And compared with uh, various standards of, in the industry, and it's modern and low maintenance and best in class security and governance is what I'm really trying to highlight. And that is our architecture, multi instance architecture. Uh, with multi-tenant services, products built on our integrated risk management platform. That is our journey. That's what we, where we are in this journey. And, and this is really taking into uh, all the input that you, you have provided us over the years. And to wrap up our three game changers. Yeah. No, and, and, and I think as, to just, as you think through the kind of where the world is going into the future, and I, I generally think of good things comes in, in threes. And there are three key game changers that we look at it as, as you think about your GRC strategy in the future. The first is, you know, and you're going to get a glimpse of the GRC co-pilot. You've got to build your own co-pilot within the four walls of your enterprise. How does that co-pilot help operate not just the GRC professionals, but also people in the front lines? you know, with the specific aid and help that they need to be able to do their functions. So that's number one. Number two, how does AI, the generative AI itself, create synthetic GRC content? And a lot has been talked about in the AI world about synthetic data. 
I think the world is moving towards the stage where you can actually create synthetic DRC content that can be generated by Gen AI itself, and that's going to change the landscape of what can be made possible in the future. And last but not least, to the extent that you can actually have privacy-aware, anonymized collaboration across different GRC uh, initiatives, across different companies and industries that anonymize learning, what I would call collaborative learning or federated learning, where you're not really shipping the data, but you're shipping the coefficients, the mapping, and some of the key vectors based on which you are actually creating the AI model, the language model that actually learns from the collaboration across enterprises, across you know the groups like yourself, in a safe, privacy-aware manner. That's the, the ultimate power because we will learn from each other's mistakes. The risk that shows up in one company actually propagates, you know, without with with the preservation of the privacy and data. So that's the third piece. So with these three game changers. I think that's what's ahead of us. That makes our lives really exciting in terms of our teams and our D organization, but across all of metric stream, really figuring out how we do we innovate on these three game changers. That's where the future is. So thank you. I'll give yeah. Prasad away to kind of uh, wrap this up and uh, finally. And I'm gonna call out a few names. Uh, if you will, Raghu, please stand up, if you will. Uh, he's head of our product management, and Shrey and Anil. Our product managers, they're available, they're here to give you a demo of this GRC Copilot right today. The way we do things is we release it to beta to get feedback from customers and prospects and as and refine the, our product offering. And then we hope to launch this in another uh, month or two with a few more use cases. Right now, two use cases, it's live with two use cases, along with uh, Joy. Where our joy is, and he can be. I think you ran a session yesterday highlighting the features of low code, no code, and he's also available. If you have any questions about low code, no code, we can actually demonstrate all of those configurability features and some of the new UI, UX, along with Manu, who is, uh, you know, gives us and provides us intelligence into product marketing, as well as Chris Sams, and he can give you an insight into our integration with AWS Audit Manager and Cyber GRC together along with Neha. Do not miss that session. Neha and Anil's session uh, later today about that offering. And we have so many things happening here at Metricstream and we are innovating and, and leading the charge in the GRC space. I'm right on time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you all.